Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. I saw a bear last weekend. Holy f That has nothing to do with the video. I just thought I'd share. <clears throat> well, it's about time we have the talk. Um, I think you're finally old enough to hear this. And uh, believe me, it's as awkward for me as it is for you. When a man and a woman are in love with photography, sometimes something special will happen and they'll develop their photography favorites. And that's what we'll be discussing today, whether it be photographers or gear. First up, I think my favorite camera as of late has to be the Contax T2. I'm sure you guys have noticed I've been using the crap out of this thing lately. This is a really solid camera and I'd say my favorite part is the exposure compensation dial here at the top, which is kind of something that I don't think a lot of point and shoots have. Everything else is about as automated as you want it to be. On top of that, this thing is pocket sized, so it's super easy to carry along to the market, the park, or the strip club. These things are stupidly expensive. You can thank several celebrities for that. Is it worth the money? Probably not, no, but I'm having fun with mine until the day it inevitably lets me down like every child does to its parents. I'm a huge fan of Elsa Bleda's work. Something about the colors and the lighting and the mood just makes me wanna run away from all of my adult responsibilities and exist in that composition. Being an adult is hard. She's a photographer from South Africa and is known mostly for her nighttime work and surrealist vision, which is reflected in her compositions. It's very fantastical. It's like if Blade Runner had a baby with Narnia and then that baby dropped acid. I'd be very surprised if she was shooting film this whole time, but I can look the other way on that. Just like I look the other way when the check arrives at dinner. The process doesn't really matter because What's important is the final image, right? You can find her on Instagram, at Elsa Bleda. I'm not sure if she has like an official website or portfolio online or anything like that because I couldn't find one. But yeah, be sure to check her work out for some sweet inspiration. My favorite film as of late, and I'm sure this comes as no surprise, has definitely been Kodak Color Plus 200. I kind of liken it to a cheaper version of Portra 400. There's definitely some differences, like Color Plus has more of a gold cast to it, but it handles uh, overexposure pretty well, which is crucial for me. My local photography shop was actually out of this stuff the other day and I nearly had a full-blown Chernobyl breakdown. I almost shaved my head and ugly cried all over the store. I think Portra 400 is still my favorite for serious work but I've been using Color Plus 200 a lot lately because none of my work is serious. Kodak, please sponsor me. One of my favorite YouTube film photography channels is one that I've been following for years. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Matt Day? But for real, uh, Madison B Photography. I assume the B stands for baller because her channel's pretty pimp. She does a lot of work with point shoots, which is pretty cool. And uh, I think she works at a charity shop in the UK. So, so she has access to just random cameras that come across in her work. I think she mentioned somewhere that she went to school for photography, so She's definitely a lot more knowledgeable than me. She recently did a video on the Olympus MJU-2 and all of its quirks. Honestly, I wish she would upload more. I think her stuff is really cool. So uh, yeah, head on over and say, what's up? My favorite photo book is definitely How to Talk to Your Cat About Gun Safety. I find it to be a really sobering look at the life of the American gun-owning house cat. Okay, for real, if we're not counting personal Shrek fanfiction, I've actually been digging through uh, this book a lot lately. 
It's called Aftermath by Joel Meyerowitz. It's a collection of images from the site of the World Trade Center just days after the tragedy. Apparently Joel Meyerowitz was one of the only photographers allowed on the site in the days after during the cleanup. What's even more incredible is that every photo in this book was composed on 8x10 film, so to see them printed huge with lots of details is incredible. I actually got this book for free at my last job. I was watching a video about someone's favorite photography books and they had mentioned Aftermath and I thought that name sounded really familiar so I looked under my desk and lo and behold this book was right there Whoever worked at my desk before me must have just left it behind and forgotten about it like a dumpster baby My favorite photography accessory lately has definitely going to be the Metz flash It's the Metz uh, 45 CL1 and I had to Frankenstein some parts together to get a working one. I had to get a new flash sync cord because the original there was some um, exposed wire and I just didn't trust myself not to stick my mouth on it and end it all whenever I screwed up a shot. The original batteries um, were some old rechargeable technology that didn't actually come with the recharging cable so that was super helpful. Luckily B&H came through in the clutch and I got a new battery holder that holds double A's. What's kind of cool about this flash is that it attaches to the camera here and you can kind of get a bit more of an angle on the subject when the flash fires. You set your ISO and f-stop here on the top and then you plug in your flash sync to your flash sync port on your camera. Admittedly I still haven't really gotten used to shooting with the flash but I'm getting better. Sometimes when I'm firing away I tend to assume every shutter speed is okay to use with a flash when it's not. A lot of cameras have uh, maximum shutter speeds that you can use with a flash sync port so don't be like me. Do your research. Anyway, that's it. Uh, be sure to tune in for the next video where I mess up some flash sync settings. <laughs>